I've got this Breadboard 6502 computer running Microsoft Basic, but so far you can only interact with it through this serial port terminal. But it's got this LCD module, and it would be nice if we could display stuff on there directly through uh, from Basic. And there's a couple ways to do that. You know, one way would be to modify Basic to add a new command for outputting directly to the LCD, and we'll get to that in a minute. But Basic already has some rudimentary built-in commands for interacting with hardware: peek and poke. So if I print peek two four five seven seven. I get zero. So what that's doing is it's reading address 24577 and telling me the current value at that address. So where did I get 24577 from? Well, if I convert 24577 from decimal to hex, I get address 6001, which is the address of port A on the versatile interface adapter, which is these eight bits here. So if I set one of these bits high by connecting it to five volts, and then I peek at that address again, now I get 16 which corresponds to the bit I just flipped. If I connect that bit back to zero volts and peak again, as you might imagine, it is back to zero. So if I connect a different bit to five volts, let's say instead of bit four, I go with bit five, connect that to five volts and uh, peak at that address again, it shows that that bit's set. Similarly, I can use the poke command to write data to an address. So if I do poke 24579 comma 255, that writes a 255 to address 24579. And address 24579 corresponds to hex address 6003, which is the data direction register for port A. So by setting that to 255, it sets all these bits now to be output instead of input. So now with those pins as output, I can hook an LED up to one of those pins. So I'll just hook a, up to uh, one of those pins, I'll hook an LED through a resistor uh, to ground. Now I can poke 24577, that same address we were peeking at before, and set it to 16 to turn on that same bit. And that turns on the LED. Poking a zero into that address again, of course, turns off the LED. So now we can use the same concept to poke values into a port B, which is connected to the LCD. So I have some poke instructions that initialize the LCD here that I'll paste in. So the first instruction here writes 255 to address 24578, and that's the data direction register for port B. So that just sets all of those bits to output, and the rest initializes the port into four bit mode. So 24576, that's the address for port B. And this just writes different values, uh, toggling the enable bit each time to, to send each command to, to initialize the LCD. And I'm not gonna go into all the details of each command since I did that in a previous video. But you can either check out my video on that, or you can see the data sheet for the LCD that I've got uh, on my website. But the way the LCD works, you can either send it commands or characters to print. So here's some code for sending a command. And this takes a command in the variable CMD, which is just gonna be a, a number. And it sends the top four bits, toggling the enable bit, followed by sending the bottom four bits, toggling the enable bit. So then this subroutine can be called to send a command. And I've also got a uh, similar code to send a character. Again, it sends the top four bits of the character. In this case, it's in this variable care dollar, plus it sets bit four to indicate that it's a character, not a command, um, and toggles the enable bit. And then it sends the bottom four bits. So with these three subroutines, I could call go sub 1000 to initialize the LCD. So you can see that initializes it. And then I can send commands to put it into whatever modes I want. So command equals 14, and then go sub 1200 to send that command, uh, turns on the cursor, for example. Then I can set care dollar equal to A, and call go sub 1300 to print the A to the screen. Putting it all together, I could write a little program like this. So we start out with go sub 1000, which initializes the LCD. Then use go sub 1200 to send a series of commands. So 40 sets up a two line display with a five by eight font. Command 14 turns the cursor on, um, not blinking. Command six uh, sets up the cursor to automatically move each time we print a character and not scroll the display. Um, and then one clears the display. Then I have this string s dollar equal to my message, hello world. And then I've got a loop to loop through each character. So I goes uh, from one to the length of that string s dollar. And I set care dollar to the character I want to print and call go sub 1300 to print that character because that's what that uh, subroutine does. And then the mid function here just uh, picks out each character from string s dollar at position i, it grabs one character. And then next i closes that loop and that's it. So if I run this program, you can see it prints out hello world. But did you notice how slow that was? Um, let me do it again. I'll set command equal to one to clear the screen and go sub 1200. 
And then I'll run the program again. And look at it, look how slow that is. And that's largely because BASIC is an interpreted language. You know, when I run that program, the processor is spending a ton of time parsing each command. So for every single poke command, it has to read the letters P-O-K-E and, you know, figure out what that means. It has to read this address, 24576, you know, convert that into a number, parse it, you know. And it has to parse and interpret all this and do the math and everything to figure out what number this computes to. And it has to do that for every single poke command, so it ends up being very time-consuming. So what I want to do is add a new instruction to BASIC. So I could do something like LCD print 65 to print a character. In this case, 65 would be the ASCII code for the letter A. So this would print the letter A to the LCD. But of course, you know, if I try this, I get a syntax error because this isn't a valid instruction. But let's change that. So here's the source code for Microsoft BASIC. And there's a file, token.s, which lists all of the language tokens. And it uses this macro keyword RTS. Uh, to define each keyword with a subroutine it's called whenever that keyword's encountered. So I can go down here and define some new keywords. I'll create an if def block here so that the new keywords that I define will only be part of the basic that's built for my computer. And I'll add a keyword for LCD command. This will be a new instruction for sending a command to the LCD module. And then I'll also add an instruction for LCD print to print a character on the LCD screen. And the part in quotes here is the actual instruction that we'll now be able to type in our basic programs. And the second label here is the, uh, an assembly label, which I'll define in a new file. So let's save this and I'll create a new file, lcd.s, that'll have our LCD assembly code. And this is gonna be assembly code that goes into the code segment. And again, I'll wrap everything in this file in an if def um, so that it's only gonna be included in the version of basic for my computer. And so in this file, this is where we're gonna have the LCD command subroutine and the LCD print subroutine. And so these subroutines are where we're, we're gonna be able to write assembly code that'll get run whenever we use our new LCD command or LCD print commands in BASIC. And I'm also gonna add an LCD init subroutine here to initialize the LCD. So I'll save this, and before I get to the actual code in here, I'm gonna go over to the msbasic.s file, and at the bottom of this file, I'll include the, the lcd.s, the new file we just created. Um, that way it'll be included as part of the, the overall build. So I'll save that, and then I'll go to init.s and add a call to initialize the LCD when BASIC starts up. And so this uh, cold start here, this is the, the entry point for where base, when BASIC starts up. So when, when BASIC starts, this is where all the initialization uh, code runs. So this is all an existing initialization code, and there's all sorts of if defs and such for different platforms. But I think down here somewhere, I can um, just kind of add my, my LCD initialization code. And so again, I'll wrap this in an if def, because I only want this code to run in the version of BASIC that I'm building for my breadboard computer. And inside here, I'll just jump subroutine to LCD init. And so I'll save that and go back to the LCD code. So now we've got LCD init that's gonna get called when BASIC first starts up. And then LCD command and LCD print are gonna get called by the new instructions that we've added. So now we just need to fill in the assembly code for each of these. And again, I'm not gonna go into excruciating detail because I've already covered how to talk to the LCD in assembly in previous videos. Um, so I'm just gonna paste in the code I've used before. I'll start out at the top here with some definitions for addresses of port B, data direction register B, uh, and the bit masks for enable, read, write, and, and register select. Then I'll start off with the code for LCD print. So I'll paste that in. And this code um, I've used before, it prints whatever character is in the A register out to the LCD screen. And you know, it starts out by calling this uh, subroutine LCD wait. And that's because it's possible to send commands or characters to the LCD too fast for it to process. So before we send a new command or character, we've got to check to see if the LCD is done processing the last one. And you know, this wasn't an issue when we were poking values in BASIC because BASIC runs so incredibly slowly um, that there, there was no way we were sending instructions too fast. Uh, but here, uh, we do need to implement this LCD wait function, but I've already done that before, so I'm just gonna go up to the top here and paste in the function that I've used before uh, for LCD wait. So this sets the LCD to input, and it basically just keeps reading from the LCD and checking the busy flag, uh, and just sits in a loop until it's ready to, to receive the next character. So that's our LCD wait, so we've got that implemented. But if we look at our LCD print, you know, this subroutine here, what it does is it prints whatever characters in the A register out to the LCD. 
But we want to be able to you know, run the LCD print command from within basic, um, something like this, where we say LCD print 65. And we want this 65 to be the character that we that we print. 65 is the ASCII for, for the letter A. So we want to print the letter A in this case. So we don't want to get our value from the A register necessarily. We want to actually get it from our commands. How do we do that? And so to figure out how to do that, I was poking around in poke.s to see how the poke instruction works. So here's the code for poke. As if you think about what poke does, it's just a store A. It's storing a value at an address. So here's the store A instruction, and it's storing whatever's in the A register to this address of line num plus y, but of course y is zero, so really just address a line num. And then right before that, it transfers x to A, so really it's taking whatever's in the x register and putting it out into address line num, whatever that is. So it looks like this get num subroutine here is somehow figuring out what address we want to poke to and what value we want to poke there. And it's putting the address to poke to in line num, and it's putting the thing we want to poke there in the X register, which then gets transferred to A and stored. So if we go back and look at this get num subroutine, which is just up at the top of the file here, the comment here say it says it's evaluating expression one comma expression two. And expression one is a 16-bit uh, value, and it's putting that in line num. And then it says expression two is an 8-bit number that it's putting into the X register, and that makes sense. So from what I could tell, these first two subroutines that it's calling um, is dealing with putting the 16-bit number, the first 16-bit number into line num. And we don't really need that for what we're doing. We just want the value. So then we get down here, we have check com, which I think is just parsing uh, and dealing with the comma, followed by get byte, which is getting the expression and putting that as a single byte into the X register. So I think this uh, get byte subroutine is what we want. So if we go back to our LCD code, for our LCD print function here, let's add a jump subroutine to get byte. That's going to parse and read a byte into the X register. And then we can uh, transfer X to A to then put that into the A register because the rest of this code is just going to print out whatever's in the A register to the LCD. And I think that takes care of LCD print. LCD command is basically the same story. So I'll again paste my previous code in here for sending a command to the LCD. And just the same as LCD print, this sends whatever command is in the A register out to the LCD. So we can kind of do the same thing where we just call um, get byte, and that'll read the parameter from the instruction, put that in the X register. So then we can transfer X to A, and the rest of this will then send whatever's in the A register to the LCD as a command. So now we just need to implement the LCD init instruction here to initialize the LCD when basic starts up. Again, I'll paste in my previous code. And so what this does is it sets up the data direction register for all pins to be output so that it, we're talking to the LCD. And then it sets up the LCD in 4-bit mode. And the way, the way it does that is a little bit convoluted here because when, you know, when we first start up, we don't really know what state the LCD is in. We don't know if it's in 4-bit mode or 8-bit mode. We don't know if it's in 4-bit mode and halfway through an instruction. So this first attempt here to set it into a mode might be the second half of a of a 8-bit instruction or second four bits of an 8-bit instruction, if it's in four-bit mode. If it is, then it's you know ready to receive another instruction as two halves. And so these next two attempts to set it into 8-bit mode may su successfully set it into 8-bit mode. If it started in 8-bit mode, then all three of these um, instructions are basically just repetitive. Um, but one way or the other, by the time we're done with all of that, we know that the LCD is really in 8-bit mode. But of course, we're wired up for 4-bit mode, so we now we need to actually set it into 4-bit mode. So at this point, we now know that we're actually in 4-bit mode. And, and this is all uh, sort of described in the, in the data sheet um, as, as to how to force the thing into 4-bit mode, regardless of what state it's in. But this is um, how that's done. But once it's in 4-bit mode, now we can just send normal instructions to set it up however we want. So we want a two-line display, the 5 by 8 font. We want the display on. We want the cursor on. Um, we don't want to shift the display. We want to increment the cursor automatically, and we want to clear the display to, to start it out. Um, and these are all commands that we're sending, just like we would send with this LCD command thing. Um, in this case, I'm jumping to LCD instruction, which I haven't defined here yet. Um, but it's basically the same thing as sending a command. So what I'll do, um, except, of course, we don't need to read the byte from the user. So what I'll do is I'll set, I'll add a label here for LCD instruction. So here, when we load our instruction into the A register and we jump to LCD instruction, um, we can skip this part where we're actually getting the instruction from the user um, and just execute that instruction. So hopefully all that makes sense. 
is that's our code then to initialize the LCD. But with that, I think that's it. You know, I actually found it to be surprisingly painless to add new instructions to BASIC, at least for something, you know, relatively straightforward like this. So let's save this and we can rebuild. No errors, that's a good thing. I'll go ahead and write that to the EEPROM. So I'll put the EEPROM back in, power up, and reset. And it doesn't immediately initialize the LCD because it won't do that until we start BASIC. So here we're in Wasmon, uh, but we can start BASIC. We'll go to address 8000 and run that. And you can see immediately the LCD is now initialized with the cursor on, just like I had it configured in that init routine. And so now we're in BASIC, and we should have a couple new instructions. So if I do LCD print 65, it prints an A to the screen, since 65 is the ASCII code for A. LCD print 66 is going to print a B, and, and so on. The cool thing, though, is because we're using that existing get byte routine, we're taking advantage of basics parsing of the parameter. So I can assign a variable, let's say C, to um, ASCII of lowercase x. And now if I print C, it's a 120 which is the ASCII value for lowercase x. But now I can do LCD print C, and it prints an x to the screen. So it's automatically resolving that variable and printing the, you know, the, the value that it that points to onto the, the screen. We should also have the LCD command uh, instruction. So LCD command a 1. That sh this, should, uh, this is the command to clear the screen. So that seems to work. Cleared the screen. And so now I can use these new instructions in a program and see if it's any faster. So here's a program I'll paste in that prints hello world. You can see the first instruction is LCD command one that clears the screen. And then we set a string S dollar to hello world. And then we just iterate over that string, the length of S, assigning character to each one. And then we LCD print that character. So we're still printing one character at a time, um, but we're using this LCD print instruction instead of all the poke instructions. So let's run that and see if it's any faster. Yeah, I would say that's way faster. Uh, here's a real-time comparison of the speed difference uh, versus doing all the poke statements in BASIC. So I would say that's pretty good. And, you know, it'd be interesting to extend this so LCD print works with a string rather than having to loop through each character in BASIC. You know, it'd be nice to be able to say LCD print, hello, something like that. Of course, it says type mismatch because we're calling that get byte where we're looking for a byte. Um, but it'd be interesting to, to see if there's a way we could parse this, the string. I'm sure there is a way to do that, and that might be pretty interesting. And, and I bet that would even make it faster still. So yeah, perhaps I'll look into that. But anyway, thanks to all my patrons who help make these videos possible. Uh, if you like these videos and are able to support me, consider doing so. And if you already have, well, thank you.